Hello everyone, welcome to Positive Atheism YouTube channel in English. Gora's Autobiography, We Become Atheists, Chapter 4 The First Dismissal I was reading extensively for and against atheism. Atheism was not an intellectual understanding with me. I wanted to know how an atheist was different from atheist in the ways of life. It appeared to me that people closed their minds with faith in God and fate. They lost initiative, became superstitious and fanatically cling to their beliefs. But God and fate were beliefs with no basis in reality. They were falsehoods. If we reject them, we stand on our feet, feel free, work well and live equal since all of us belong to the same kind. With this ambitious plan, I set about my life. I knew I would clash with vested interests and conservative views in the old ways of life, but I would work with no regrets. At first, I started with exposure of superstitions and pulling down sectarian walls. I discarded the sacred thread because it was a caste symbol. As I was a student of science with some wide reading of different branches of knowledge and as I had leisure and held a job which placed me decently above want, I indulged in discussions against superstitions and accompanied them with demonstrations of simple scientific experiments. For instance, turmeric with slaked lime turns red. When lemon juice or tamarind paste is added to the red substance, it turns yellow again. The truth is, turmeric responds to acid and alkali media. Ignorant of the chemical nature of the reaction, mendicants shroud it in a religious grab and present it as a miracle. Similarly, eclipses are not explained in a scientific way, but are associated with superstitious practices in the name of miracles. Miracles thrive where ignorance prevails, and religious belief closes the mind and becomes the source of dark superstition. Close to my residence was a slum of untouchables called Achutapuram. Untouchables are socially segregated, poor, illiterate and downtrodden. I established contacts with the slum and started an adult night school there on my own accord. But the adults were irregular and slow to take advantage of the school. On studying the situation, I found that the immediate need of the adults of the slum was not education but food. Most of them had to work the whole day at odd manual labor. Either they were not paid the wages for the day or they were paid so late that they had to buy food grains late and cook for the day to eat. The prospect of obtaining labor for the next day was uncertain and the threat of starvation constantly hovered over them. I learned the reality of slum life more than I taught them lessons. And to be real to the common people, atheism should solve the economic problem of India. The academic life at the college posed its own problems. To mention one, I noticed a student of my class dull and inattentive. I talked to him privately and he said that he had no interest in botany. Fine. I requested him to think over and tell me the next day the subject in which he had interest so that I could recommend to the principal the change of his subject. He thought over and informed me that he could not fix his interest on any subject. I explained to him that the defect was not with botany but with his attitude towards life. I encouraged him to continue in botany class as he had already done three weeks in it. A few days later, I held a test for the class and deliberately gave him a good mark. He was surprised and asked me if he was good at the subject. I encouraged him and in the next test, he deserved the mark. 
He passed BA in botany at the first chance. Ten years later, I met Suri Narayana, the same student at a meeting in another district to learn from him that he was teaching botany in a school and with a glee in his face, he said he was creating interest in botany in his students. Supply, cheer and man is all right. There were several occasions for me to seek atheistic solution of the problems of my students, their educational difficulties and domestic troubles. I asked them to flee free as masters of their lives, to take step towards equality of all humans and to live open without a blush and to tell what we do and to do what we tell. These simple guidelines evoked new enthusiasm amongst my students. They used to visit me with their families and my wife and I paid return visits to their homes. The social calls mingled up several of us crossing conventional barriers of caste and communal differences. It was a big chance in India in those days before attainment of political independence. I was happy to be with the students both inside and outside the college. The happy relations had a healthy effect on their studies. They paid good attention to what I was teaching and fared well at examinations. Most of them came out brilliantly as professors, legislators, advocates or successful businessmen. Even 40 years after the completion of their student career, I keep up good social relations with many of my old students. J. Venkateshwarlu, Professor Emeritus of Andhra University, C. V. K. Rao, Legislator of the State Assembly, Narayana Prasad serving in the United Nations Organization, Acharyalu, a successful accountant in Bombay, and T. V. Raghavlu, a former minister, are some whom I can mention. This wide and abiding sociability I attribute to the atheist way of life. One of my students, B.V.D. Narayan Rao, started a manuscript magazine. He had a flair for journalism. He requested me for an article on atheism and I wrote on one, the concept of God. I said that the concept of God was useful in three ways. Firstly, it provided a ready answer to every question in the form of God's creation and God's will. Secondly, it supplied a sanction for moral conduct in the form of hope of heaven and fear of hell. Thirdly, it could be molded conveniently for any theme of fine arts. A large volume of song, dance, painting and sculpture was produced in the name of God. In spite of its usefulness, the concept of God was a falsehood. Like every falsehood, it corrupted mankind by importing superstition and fanatism into the belief in God. I concluded that though God was a useful falsehood, it should be discarded as every other falsehood in order to promote truthful life and real social harmony. PR College, where I served, was inspired with the ideology of Brahmuism a liberal offshoot of Hinduism. Yet, avowed atheism was too much of irreligion for the management. The authorities of PR College took exception to my expression of atheist views in the article on the concept of God and called for my explanation. I replied that I was an atheist by conviction and those were my views. My services were dispensed with after a due notice of three months. My students moved in the matter and lodged a protest against my dismissal. It was of no avail. After five years of lectureship, I left the services of my alma mater in 1933. Atheism clashed with my parents. Atheism caused my dismissal from the college. For more videos, please subscribe to this channel Positive Atheism and activate the bell icon.